Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a wiring and setup guide for the Montec Century G5. Now this is an 850 watt modular power supply unit, which includes a variety of different cables. So I'm going to quickly take all those cables out, show you what's included, and then I'm going to show you the setup and wiring process for everything you're going to need in your PC build. All the most logical things that you're going to be using motherboard, graphics card, SSD, hard disk drives, and other things. Now, make sure before you do all that, that this is enough wattage for your system. I'll leave a link to a video where I go into a bit more depth on that. But here you can see all the different cables laid out once we've got them outside of the box. And now I'll show you where they connect. We'll start with the motherboard power connections, which is three cables, one large one, and then two marked CPU. So the large one is the 24 pin power cable, which connects the right hand side of the motherboard. This is important you need to make sure this is well secured and in both ends of the power supply and the motherboard to ensure that you're getting power through. Again, I'm showing you this outside the case so you can see it nice and clearly, but obviously you would actually install the power supply and everything else and then plug the cables in at nearer the end of the build. But I wanna show you how to do it now. So at the end, which is split into two parts, you plug that into the power supply unit. So the larger end goes into the one marked motherboard and then the other power cable goes below that. These need to be pushed all the way in. You'll notice there's a little clip on top of them. Push that all the way in. It will secure that cable into place and ensure that you're getting the power through because often if your PC is not booting or not turning on, it might be that these cables are loose at either end. The other end plugs in on the right hand side of the motherboard and slots into place. Again, there's a plastic clip, which you can see on the outside of the connector and on the cable. So you need to make sure it's lined up that way. You can only plug it in one way. Then there are two CPU power cables, which are marked CPU on one end. You plug the other end into the power supply unit and then you need to secure those to the top left of the motherboard. This is for additional power for the motherboard and I would recommend plugging them in if you have them. You may find your motherboard has different connectors. Sometimes there might be only one eight pin power cable at the top left here. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's one eight pin and one four pin. You need to split the cables in that case and run them together. Next is the SATA power connections. So this is for the SSDs and hard disk drives and other things as well. Fan controllers, for example, as I'll show you later. So you plug in the one end into the SATA port on the power supply unit and then the other end has this flat l-shaped connector on it which is daisy chain so you notice there's multiple connectors on one cable and you plug your ssds into it so this is a crucial drive but you can see we're just going to plug that power cable into the larger port on there notice it's got a little l-shaped bracket in it so you can only plug it in one way so if you find it won't go in it's because you've got it the wrong way around and then that's how the power cable would connect. And then you need the data cable, which I'll show you in a second where that goes. But because this has multiple connections on it, you can plug in another drive into here with ease and you can connect multiple drives that way into one cable. So you don't have to have loads of cables. And this is handy if you've got lots of storage that you want to connect up there. So this cable can be used for different things, hard disk drives, SSDs, fan controllers and other things as well but you might need another cable so this one actually comes with two of these and then you've got four connectors here so we can plug in another drive with relative ease you may find other power supply units have a lot more connections as well but this is a fairly straightforward setup for the power but then obviously you need a cable from your motherboard now this usually comes with the motherboard you'll find this data cable included with your motherboard it connects at one end to the drive and then the other end to the motherboard this has a little metal clip on it. Again, it'll only plug in one way and that metal clip is essentially the release. It plugs into your driver and then it plugs in the right hand side right near the bottom into the SATA port and this allows for the transfer of data between them. You may find you have one cable which has a 90 degree angle on it which you can plug in and then the other end is a flat connector which plugs into the SSD. You've got two different styles of cables Either one's got a flat end on both ends or, or you've got one that's a 90 degree and then a flat end on the other connector. The next cable is the Molex cable. Now this is pretty rare in terms of whether you use it in your system or not. It used to be for DVD drives and SSDs and things. But here I'm showing that you could use it for the Razer Chroma controller. This is a little control box that you can use to plug in RGB fans or other RGB parts, LED strips for example, into your system. It requires power 
and that power comes in the form of the Molex power cable. And I'll show you how to connect that. But this is one thing. You may also have a liquid pump in a full custom loop system that will use it. It's not a very common cable to need to plug in, so you might not need to use it. But this Razor Chroma controller has that power cable on it. And it is a little bit fiddly to plug in. But as with the other connections, it plugs into the power supply at one end and then the controller at the other end. So this is used here, for example, with Montex RGB fans. You can then use the Razer Chroma software to control the RGB lighting, which is ideal if you're using Razer things in general. Now you plug this into the Molex and SATA ports on the power supply unit on one end. And then the other end you can see is basically shaped in one way. So you can only plug it in one way when you plug it into the other cable. And it's a little bit fiddly to do. I found, for example, that one of the pins was pointing in the wrong direction, which made it tricky. You have to sort of pinch it into place and get it to fit nicely. And then you can power that. Note that I'm showing all of these things outside of the case and outside of the build so they're really clear and easy to see and understand in case you're wondering. But obviously you would actually do this when the parts are in your build. Now we're on to graphics cards and this is a 3090 to start with. This has a 8 pin CPU power connector. So this cable has the connection on one end and then two other connectors on the other end marked PCIe. You'll notice that they're split in parts. This is a pigtail design, which means it has two parts to it. So there's a power cable that plugs into the power supply, and then you've got two cables, essentially. We also have two of these included, and they both have that pigtail set up. Now, this isn't actually ideal from this power supply. Really, it'd be better to have a cable that has just one connector on either end, because for this graphics card, we need two 8-pin CPU power connectors, and it's a 3090, which means it's pretty powerful. But if you have a lesser... GPU that might be fine. You can see we're looking for the PCIe power connectors on here which are marked CPU slash PCIe. You plug in the cable into that and then the other end is going to plug into the graphics card. Now we're going to need to set this up and then plug the power cables in. Note as I've said already but you want to make sure everything's installable if you do this but I just want to make it clear how you do it and where these things plug in. You can see on this end of the graphics card, we've got two 8-pin power connectors in here which need to be plugged in. Again, there's a plastic clip on top to let you know which way around the cable should go. But the difficulty with this you'll find is that the 8-pin power connectors are actually split in two. You've got one 6-pin power connector and then one with two pins in it. You have to push those two together with the little clips on the side and then hold it in place while you then push it into the GPU's power connector. It's a little bit fiddly to do and can cause some problems. If you find your graphics card isn't working properly, it could be that the two pins have come a little bit loose during this process. So just check and make sure they're fully secured. Now on a lesser graphics card, you could use the pigtail setup so that you use the other eight pin connector and plug that into the second power cable. However, I'd suggest that on a 3090 or something equally powerful, you would actually want to not do that and instead use a separate power cable from the power supply unit and then plug in the other end to your GPU. So you've got two cables, one for each port on the graphics card. This will ensure better power through to the GPU and that you get the most performance out of it. The downside is because these are both pigtail cables, you're then left with these two extra cables that are then dangling around and won't look very neat. So you need to find somewhere to hide those away. Now for a 40 series GPU from NVIDIA, life's a little bit easier because this power supply comes with that special 12 volt high power cable, which is marked 450 watts on this. So this has the same connection on both ends. One end plugs into the graphics card, one into the power supply. There's no additional pigtail cables. There's no complications. The only thing to bear in mind is that you do need to make sure that both ends are fully secured into the power supply and into the graphics card and that there's no extra tension put on this with it's being bent at weird angles that could cause problems because some of these have melted on higher end GPUs. You plug it into the power supply, make sure it's pushed all the way in fully secured as with any of these cables, but it's particularly important with these ones 
because they have a lot of power running through them potentially on the hydro graphics cards and then you'd secure the other end into that slot on the gpu there's only a single connector now this goes in place of the adapters that probably came with your graphics card which is nice so if you've got this cable, you don't need to use that cable, which has multiple cables coming out of it. Instead, you can just slot this power cable right in and have a single connection. That's a lot neater. Now, when you've established what cables you need for your power supply, I'd recommend plugging them all in before you start mounting it into the case. This will ensure that life is a lot easier in terms of the cable management and also just plugging things in. Because if you put all the power supply into the case, and then you find you are missing a cable because you need an additional one trying to plug it in afterwards is always a hassle you'll then find there are psu screws in the box for the case you should also have some with your power supply alternatively and then you want to mount it this way around so the fan is facing outwards because it will be pulling cold air in from the side of the case and then exhausting out of the rear you then secure it in four corners at the rear of the case you should find the holes there line up You'll notice there's a little foot at the bottom of the power supply where it can sit on basically a little shelf to hold it into place while you secure it. And then you can just tighten those screws up. After that, just run the cables through and plug them in as I've shown you. So the 24 pin on the right hand side, the eight pin power connectors at the top. Make sure you plug in any fan controllers and other things at the rear as well. And your SSDs and hard disk drives as well repeating the process until they're all fully plugged in and neatened up. Don't forget the GPU as well. So when you've slotted the graphics card into the top slot on the motherboard, you then want to get the power cable. So for this 40 series card, what we're actually going to do is secure it. And then we're going to pull the power cable from underneath. This allows you to run that cable in a way where it's not going to be putting a load of pressure on it. So it's important not to put pressure on this cable from any direction. You can then run it through here, plug it in and fully seat it. I like to check to make sure everything's plugged in properly, obviously by powering it on at this stage and checking everything's running properly. And then you can fully cable tie and secure everything at the rear and go about the process of installing Windows and hopefully enjoying a fully built system. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to the build guide on this case and see other related things as well that might be useful. This has been The Provoke Prawn. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you think. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.